Welcome back to the Carolina Ale House in Charleston, South Carolina, where you will not find Senator Bernie Sanders. He has already turned his attention to Super Tuesday. You just heard him there last night in Springfield, Massachusetts. Here he is at a rally today in Virginia. Democrats in those two states will cast their ballots in just three days. The senator still leads in the national delegate count, though he has often trailed in South Carolina. Earlier, I spoke with Congressman Ro Khanna. He represents California's 17th district and is a national co-chair for Senator Sanders' presidential campaign. How are you feeling about South Carolina right now? I'm feeling very good. We've had extraordinary enthusiasm at the canvas launches I've been at in Charleston and Columbia. Uh, we're going to have a very, very strong showing, and it's going to position us well for wins on Super Tuesday. Um, the senator's having rallies in these other Super Tuesday states. Is that a sign that he's not confident in the South Carolina results? Not at all. You remember that he uh, gave his victory speech in Texas after he won Nevada. So we're always uh, very passionate about the state we're in, but also looking ahead. And as you know, 14 states are going to vote in three days, so he has to cover a lot of ground. Uh, the senator has said himself he's gotten the national front runner treatment. <laughs> um, is the campaign concerned that if there is a big win for Joe Biden here, that in fact he could be right back in this race? Well, we don't underestimate uh, Vice President Biden. It's going to be a formidable uh, competition and he's a formidable com a competitor. But here's the reality. We are winning with African Americans in the latest Harris poll. We're winning with working uh, Americans. We're winning with Latino Americans. We are winning uh, over Donald Trump at 54 out of 59 polls. So we have the broadest coalition uh, to win the nomination. So I know you were with the Reverend Jesse Jackson on the flight down yes. to Columbia uh, here in South Carolina. Does he think that the senator can actually sway black voters and persuade them to move away from Joe Biden and over to him? Absolutely. I think if you ask him, he would say that Bernie Sanders is running the campaign to fulfill what Jesse Jackson started. I mean, Jesse Jackson talked about Medicare for all back in 1988. Bernie Sanders is running on it. Jesse Jackson talked about getting us out of endless wars back then. Bernie Sanders is running on that. Jesse Jackson talked about giving everyone an education, investing in communities. Bernie Sanders is running on that. So in many ways, Bernie Sanders' campaign is inspired by the progressive movement that Jesse Jackson started. So what are you looking for here in South Carolina in terms of a measure of success? What will that look like for the Sanders campaign? I want to have a multi racial, multicultural coalition come to the polls. We want to do well with African-American voters. We want to do well with working class voters. We want to do well with women voters. We want to do well across the demographics. And that's what it looks like, not just based on the polls, but based on the turnouts we're seeing at Bernie Sanders' rallies and at these canvas launches. Is there a specific number that you're looking at with African-American voters to get here in South Carolina? Well, I don't know about a specific number. What I would hope is that we uh, do very, very well, that we build on on what we did in 2016. I'm confident we're going to do much better than 2016. I think we're going to win African-American voters under 50. And then the question is uh, how the rest of the results come out. But I'm very confident it will be a good showing. 2016 was tough for the Sanders campaign. Um, what's different now? More people know him. I mean, in 2016, very few people knew who he was. They didn't really get to kick the tires and find out what he stood for. Now they know that he's spent 40 years of his life fighting for social justice, racial justice, and they've gotten to hear his message about giving health care for all, expanding social security, tackling mass incarceration. I mean, he talks about the fact that 28 percent of South Carolinas are black and yet 78 percent of people in jail are black, that there's something fundamentally broken with our uh, criminal justice system. So I think his message is breaking through. It's been an advantage, you think, that he's been around since 2016 for people in this state in I particular? I do. I do, because I think people in this state understandably want to trust someone. They want to really know where someone stands and where they have been. And so having uh, him come back to this state for over five years consistently with people like Senator Nina Turner and Dr. Cornell West uh, has assured people that he really understands stands the needs here and is going to prioritize their needs. I want to zoom out and talk about Super Tuesday a bit more. Uh, one of those states, of course, is California, your home state, um, which has the most delegates and the senator has led there. Does he need to win, though, by a substantial margin uh, to really put this primary race away? And are you confident that he actually will? He's going to win. I think he's going to win big, but uh, we'll see how many delegates we end up with. But we're not going to take anything for granted. I mean, I'm confident we're going to be in a lead after Super Tuesday, but we're going to work hard to 
earn every vote and to build a, a majority on that first ballot. Um, so, of course, California is the biggest prize, but you have a lot of other Super Tuesday states that are in the South. Folks have talked about how the demographics of the South are changing, yes. politically speaking. So if Senator Sanders doesn't win here in South Carolina tonight, do you think that might make it harder to win in places like, say, Texas, and North Carolina, Virginia? I don't think so. The polls don't show that. I mean, the polls show us up in Texas. The polls show us up in Virginia. The polls actually show us competitive even in Florida. And that's because there is a younger generation, a multicultural, multiracial generation that likes his message, that says we don't want college debt. We don't want uh, to have huge health care costs. We don't want uh, to not be able to afford a house. We don't want these endless wars. And what's attracting people are his policies, his vision for a more progressive future. Let's talk about Massachusetts and Minnesota. What's the senator's strategy there? Well, Massachusetts, we are doing very, very well. Of course, that's Senator Warren's home state. Uh, but uh, Senator Sanders' message there on a progressive politics uh, has has uh, really appealed to people. And in Minnesota? And in Minnesota, you know, again, that's Amy Klobuchar's home state. Uh, but what we see is that Medicare for all, uh, free public college, uh, the Green New Deal and tackling climate change, that there's a constituency for this across the country, including in Minnesota. Um, before we let you go, I want to ask you about a topic that is very much on people's minds in this country, and that is the coronavirus. Yes. So we learned about the first American death in Washington state. What are lawmakers doing to try to come to some kind of bipartisan solution? Well, it's very sad and we need to act and we need to act with decisiveness. What I've called for is we need to give $15 billion to the CDC, to the NIH, for three things. One, let them work on a test that they can deploy around the nation. We need to have people tested and make sure that test is gonna happen within 48 hours. Right now, only 500 people have been tested in this country. We need to really deploy that. Two, we need to reach out to the entrepreneurs and innovators, some of them in my district in Silicon Valley, who are working on testing on antivirals and vaccines, convene all of them uh, in Washington. And finally, we need to listen to the scientists and the doctors. I, I have confidence when I hear Dr. Fauci, even though I don't have much confidence with the president, we need to give them uh, the resources so they think they can come up with the strategy. You talk about not having confidence in the president, but you know, the American people are listening to the rhetoric back and forth when it comes to the coronavirus. What assurances do you think you can provide to the American people that in fact, Democrats and Republicans can come together here for the sake of uh, public health and national security? That's my commitment. That's what we want to do. We are ready to provide the resources that this administration needs. We have said that Dr. Fauci and people like him uh, have our trust. What we want, though, is for the scientists and the doctors to lead and for there to be specific plans of what we're going to do. What are we doing to help prepare the health care providers around the country so they aren't at risk? What are we doing to make sure everyone gets tested? What are we make, doing to make sure people uh, aren't uh, avoiding care because of the costs? I mean, there was a story in Florida, someone got a $3,000 bill because they went to get treated for the coronavirus. I mean, this is what Senator Sanders has called for. Health care in this country should not be costing thousands of dollars. Um, let me ask you about the, the specifics of a spending package. Realistically, is there common ground there for Democrats and Republicans to work together on a number and have that be an example for people to see of coming together in a way maybe we haven't seen necessarily. Absolutely, there is. But $15 billion, which is uh, what I think is needed for these agencies, is not a big number when you consider that our entire defense budget was $700 billion. To put that in context, a few percent, I think most Americans would say this is a national security issue and would want us to put a few percent of what we put into defense to keep this country safe so that people don't get the coronavirus. And uh, coming back to the campaign for a moment, what is Senator Sanders' message. When it comes to this specific issue, how would he, in fact, tackle a situation like this if he were in office? Well, if he were in office, we would have Medicare for all, and that would mean that every person in this country could get tested without worrying about the costs. Every person could get treated without worrying about the costs. He would say one of the biggest concerns is that people aren't going to go to the hospital, to their doctor to get tested or to get treated because they're going to be worried about their deductibles and their co-pays. And this actually shows that we're only as safe as the least insured among us. We need to provide universal health care so everyone can get the care they need and we aren't all at risk. Representative Rokana, thank you very much for your time. Thank you.